Hello everyone, and welcome to something I haven't done in a while, a hard drive teardown. The reality is I get a lot of dead hard drives, or failing hard drives, that I could very well disassemble, but I've already disassembled pretty much every major hard drive series from every manufacturer. So, disassembling regular consumer hard drives again and again isn't interesting. But what I have today is a dead server drive. And this is not just like a 7200 RPM prosumer drive. This is a true server drive. 10,000 RPM SAS. And yeah, this is not something you can just put in your grandma's Optiplex. So, today I'm going to be disassembling this. Now, I don't much like Seagate's line of consumer drives, but their server drives are quite good. The Seagate Cheetahs were actually the first 10,000 RPM drives, and they've been good ever since. This T10 is about as old as I am, I believe, so it's unsurprising that it has failed. I've put a lot of good hours on it, in addition to the hours the previous owner put on it. So these drives all have this little green LED on the end that indicates when they're spinning up. And uh, that turns off once they are initialized with the RAID controller. So it just indicates communication between the SAS controller and the disk. However, on this one, it just stays solid and never turns off. It just keeps flashing. Sorry, it doesn't stay solid. It just continues flashing and the drive never spins up, so it's, uh, it's just dead. Let me find something to peel this label off. The interesting thing about this drive will be, probably the head mechanism will be a lot bigger than on a consumer drive, and also the platters will be smaller, because they're smaller to reduce air resistance in a high RPM drive. Oh wow, that's an interesting design already. This foil, I think will come up. Yep. And then there's probably another screw here. So these are probably the head screws and the platters are there. That's actually opposite from how I thought these drives were built since I bought my first one of them. I thought the platters would be up here. Alright, the lid is loose now. Let's look inside. Oh wow, yeah, those are some very small platters, as I expected. We also have a lot of filtering happening. Here's your main, like, filter. I guess that's the outside of the drive. This cleans air from the platters, which, speaking of platters, we have three of them widely spaced. Tiny heads and a big magnet. And most, like, super high-end server drives are actually landing zone instead of load ramp because that's faster access time from drive power off to reading. Well, while we already have this nice specimen here, we might as well take a look at the controller board. I doubt there's anything on the other side of the controller board as, well, everything's here. However, it won't hurt to take it off and just double check that. Usually the controller boards on hard drives are only one-sided, as in there's only components on one side, but mainly I'm interested in seeing if there's any more bits of the drive hidden under the controller board, like filter vents, any of that sort of thing. Your usual board is held on by three to five screws on a consumer drive, but here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, holding this one on, which is absolute overkill, but in a server environment, reliable overkill is exactly what you want. And it looks like one of them is a lot longer than the others, and that's why I'm having trouble getting it out. Okay, here we go. Nope, pretty much nothing. Although, the foam on this drive, or rather on any drive, is a good indicator of what parts get especially hot. And it all makes sense what is getting especially hot. It's the areas under the main controller and the secondary controller that are getting especially hot, as well as the motor controller up here. This is a dual port drive, so that means if that controller dies, this one takes over. 
That's a feature on server drives for, of course, reliability. Here are your vents for this big filter under here, and it looks like we can actually take this whole module out. It's one of the charcoal filled filters that's typical on hard drives. And bam, I'm just going to put that back in. I won't be taking the platters out because I actually want to preserve this hard drive as it is currently. It's quite an interesting drive to look at, and I want to keep it that way. So thank you everyone for joining me in my teardown of this 300 gigabyte Seagate drive. Oh, really quickly, uh, I want to say, so for SAS, this looks like a regular SATA connector, but what makes it SAS instead of SATA are, well, in this window you can see the extra connectors that are on the pin in the middle, and those are just more data pins, which allow SAS to be far superior to SATA. I'm always uh, really... I will always defend SAS as a superior format. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you everyone for joining me in this teardown of the server drive. And, well, might have more hard drive teardowns in the future if any more of my good drives die, which honestly I'm not looking forward to. But what I am looking forward to is you joining me next video. So please do that. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and hopefully see you next time.